Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. In today's Hot Topic video, I will be discussing mRNA vaccines. We are going to be taking a look at the science behind this newer technology in vaccine creation. This video will cover mRNA vaccinations as a whole. In order to do so, we will first do a quick recap on what mRNA is. We will also then look at the beneficial features of mRNA. We'll also look at why mRNA vaccines are a promising alternative to conventional vaccines. And finally, we'll take a look at how mRNA vaccinations work. So what is mRNA? If you haven't already watched my video entitled, What is mRNA? I encourage you to stop this video now and take a look at that video first. That video goes way more in depth as to what mRNA is. I will link it in the description box. Right now, I'm going to give you the cliff note version on what mRNA is. Now, in the nucleus of the cell, we have DNA. DNA, from DNA, we can get mRNA, and then from that mRNA, we can get protein. So the, this first process occurs within the nucleus of the cell, and then the mRNA leaves the nucleus and goes into the cytoplasm of the cell. So this um, last portion where mRNA is converted into protein occurs within the cytoplasm of the cell, specifically on something that is called a ribosome. So all in all, mRNA is necessary in order to create protein. So mRNA is the code needed in order to create specific proteins, and therefore specific mRNA codes will then code for specific proteins. Let's talk about the beneficial features of mRNA. First, mRNA is a non-infectious, non-integrating platform. This means that there is no potential risk of infection or insertional mutagenesis. mRNA by itself also doesn't last very long as it is degraded by normal cellular processes. Delivery of mRNA to the cells can be made more efficient by formulating mRNA into carrier molecules. This allows the mRNA to be taken up more rapidly by the cells and then expressed in the cytoplasm. mRNA is also the minimal genetic vector. This allows it to evade the immune system and therefore immunity to the mRNA itself is avoided. Because of this, mRNA vaccines can be administered repeatedly. And finally, mRNA vaccines have the potential for rapid, inexpensive, and scalable manufacturing. Because of these beneficial features of mRNA, much research has been previously done and will continue to still be done within this field. The mRNA vaccines have a potential to solve many of the challenges that we have had in vaccine development for tricky viruses and also perhaps even for cancer. In this video, I am just highlighting the overall use of mRNA vaccines so that you can get an idea of what they are and how they're used. However, I am going to link in the description the PDF for the paper that I used in order to help me write this. And if you're interested in learning more about this and going more in depth into the world of mRNA vaccinations, you can go ahead and read that paper. Let's take a look at why mRNA vaccines are a promising alternative to conventional vaccines. Conventional vaccines being the vaccines that we already have and use in our daily lives. If you want me to make a video on how conventional vaccines compare to mRNA vaccines or what conventional vaccines are and what they're made of, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll start making that. mRNA vaccines are showing much promise because of their high potency. This is in large part due to the fact of the high gene expression that occurs within the cell itself. mRNA vaccines also have the capacity for rapid development, much more rapid than conventional vaccines. mRNA vaccines also have the potential for very low cost manufacturing. And finally, mRNA vaccines have safe administration 
because the mRNA molecules themselves degrade very rapidly within the cells by cellular processes, and also they are non-integrating, non-infectious molecules. These are all reasons why mRNA vaccines are now being moved to the front line of vaccine development. The figure seen on the screen, which is also from the Nature Review paper that I'll be linking in the description, shows the major delivery methods for mRNA vaccines. These include anything from the naked mRNA, which is the mRNA by itself, to mRNA coupled with various carrier molecules. These various carrier molecules can help to increase the efficiency of mRNA uptake by the cell and also help protect the mRNA from being degraded before it enters the cell. Now let's take a look at how the vaccine will actually work when injected. First, the vaccine will be injected into an individual. Because mRNA is unstable and degrades easily, the vaccine must be injected while it is still cold. Once injected, the mRNA strands that are surrounded by carrier molecules to protect the mRNA from degradation will now be in the body and ready for uptake by the cells. The mRNA can then pass through the cell membrane and enter into the cytoplasm of the cell. Here in the cytoplasm, the mRNA can attach to a ribosome and be translated into protein. My video on what is mRNA goes into more detail as to how exactly this protein is made. Once the protein is made, it can then either be secreted from the cell so that it ends up on the outside of the cell, or it can be incorporated into an MHC in the surface that gets displayed on the surface of the cell. An MHC molecule, or major histocompatibility complex, is a molecule that is recognized by the immune system. The protein that the mRNA codes for is some sort of virus protein, usually a surface virus protein. This way, these proteins are going to be foreign to the body. And either way, whether the protein is secreted or displayed on the MHC1 here, either way, the body is going to mount an immune response to this. Now that gets pretty complicated and involves things like B cells and T cells. I do have a video on B cells if you're interested to see how that works. But these two will, um, either way, when it's secreted into the body or on the MHC1, these are going to allow for immune responses to occur. And ultimately, what's going to happen with these immune responses is that antibodies are going to be made against the protein. Okay, so antibodies are going to be made against the protein that was formed from that mRNA. And so the body is going to have all these antibodies um, within the body against that specific protein that was coded for by that mRNA. And then what's going to happen is if the body then encounters that virus itself, it's going to be able to already have those antibodies within the body so that it can neutralize that virus as it comes in. Now, my video on B cells describes this process a little bit better, uh, much more in detail than I'm describing it here. You can take a look at that if you're interested in how the antibodies exactly are made. I also have another uh, video on antigens and antibodies, and that video also explains the process of when these antibodies are made, what are they doing, okay? So it's really important that once these antibodies are made, the body has enough antibodies to be able to bind to these antigens and then neutralize it and basically be able to get the virus out before it causes any symptoms. This slide shows the paper, which I took most of my information from. I'll also be linking it in the description of the video. Um, just as a disclaimer, the images that I've drawn in this video are not to scale, but for educational purposes. Thank you for watching my video. 
Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the notifications so that you never miss out on a new video when I post them. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please make sure to post them below.